Hello, hello, my friends on YouTube. Mario here again with a new video on Tiwanaku and especially Pumapunku. Before we go to Tiwanaku, I take you along a series of buildings and structures that were excavated. I was always wondering how it is possible to excavate a building of a few thousand years old from an enormous depth. Here are the, the walls of King Solomon. The structure of King Solomon is excavated from many, many feet below the current ground level. You see on the background, there's the city, it's even a mosque, and the walls of King Solomon is said to be just 3,000 years old. I take you to the next one. Here is in Jerusalem, the city of David. You know King David who fought the Goliath, so according to the myth, David met the giants. Also, this city is excavated from many, many feet below the current ground level. Here, Kobleki Tepe. It's always the same story. Ancient structures that are excavated from many, many feet below the current ground level. Here, the Pantheon. Pantheon is around 2,000 years old. And you see the street level, the buildings on the background. They are all on the same level. How is it possible that structures that are a little bit older than this pantheon must be excavated from many many feet below the current ground level and the pantheon is just on exactly the same ground level this is a topic that is too less discussed among archaeologists and then here pumapunku before excavation this is a black white picture as you see and pumapunku is excavated also many many feet below the current ground level and the build-up rate of soil goes very very slowly in this region because there is hardly any new material to add to the soil because it grows hardly anything. The build-up rate of soil is mainly fueled by organic material that slowly decomposes in several elements and these several elements form soil, dense soil and this process takes many thousands of years to complete only a few inches. So here is uh, some excavation pictures from uh, Puma Punku today. You see there are still a lot of stones to be excavated. So this process is still not completed. And here another photo from Puma Punku. So these excavations are done several feet below the current ground level. Here another photo from Puma Punku. And here a photo from our friend Brian Forster, standing behind an, a row of the famous age blocks of Pumapunku. Brian, but also, and many other people, are wondering how you can cut such very precise age blocks with just uh, copper chisels and hammers. And this is granite, and granite is many times harder than uh, copper or bronze. So if it already would be possible to cut granite with bronze tools, it's simply impossible. Your tools just wear out uh, after a few blows. After this short intermezzo, I'll take you to this graph. This is a very well done research in 2018, done to the build up rate of soil. And I take you to the graph on the top right corner. You'll see this yellow band. And this yellow band, this vertical band, goes from 100 to 400,000 years and this large red dot sits in the middle of this point cloud and then we go to the left on the horizontal band and we end up with a soil thickness of between 1 meter and 3.3 meters so that equals around 3 feet up to 11 feet that is the build up speed of soil between 100 and 400,000 years. The big thing is, if an archaeologist has to excavate a building in a Mediterranean region like Israel or Turkey or, um, of course, Bolivia is not Mediterranean, but it has the same scarcity of vegetation uh, as in Israel or Turkey, there's no organic material to, to build up soil over time, hardly. So this process of soil buildup takes 
for one meter or three feet around 100,000 years. So if a building has to be excavated from dense soil in a scarcely vegetated area, this typical ground layer where this building is situated is around 100,000 years. And it's still a mystery to me why archaeology is still totally oblivious about these clear anomalies. After this intermezzo, to make you more aware about the build-up rate of soil in this area of Tiwanaku, I take you to Tiwanaku. And like I already explained in the former videos, Tiwanaku is beneath the equator. I already explained more details about Kalasasaya and about Akapana. And we now go to Pumapunku. And there is a clear pattern in orientation of these three buildings. Kalasasaya is cardinally oriented, while Akapana is slightly clockwise oriented and Pumapunku slightly more clockwise oriented. And this typical pattern of orientation follows the sequence of our pole patterns. So the poles one, two and three. So we have suggested that pole three could have possibly been on the, this position on Antarctica. And we still uh, are a little bit in doubt about the fact that Puma Punko could be much, much older than we have suggested than pole three. The probability that we are right in our preposition about Puma Punko relating to pole three is around 75% because the orientation patterns match the pole patterns. For this pattern to match, there's a probability of 75% for this to be coincidental. So it's a good start to begin with. And here you see uh, another projection of the poles on Antarctica. Pole 1, our current pole, and pole 2 and pole 3. So this orientation pattern of Kalasasaya and then Akapana and then Pumapunku this follows the same sequence of the gaps between pole 1 and pole 2 and the gap between pole 2 and pole 3. So if we project pole 3 on the timeline of the tilt angle of the Earth spin axis, then we are between 210 and 225,000 years ago. Yes, this is a long time ago. And during this period, the tilt angle of the Earth varied between 24.5 and 22.7 and we took the average tilt to make it more simple and this tilt angle was around 23.6 and this tilt angle is important to calculate a more precise solstice angle at the time the the Pumapunku structure was used and of course in relation to this pole 3 it is important for new viewers to be aware of the fact that solstice angles vary of the position of the observer on the Earth. So when the observer is at the equator, the angle between the equinox and the solstice is exactly the same as the tilt angle of the Earth. The angle between equinox and solstice is 23.5 degrees. So this varies very little at the equator. and That is why there is hardly any season on the equator in the tropics but when the observer moves to another latitude for example here on the southern tip of south america at a latitude of minus minus 50 degrees this solstice angle becomes more extreme as you see here this the solstice angle uh, as a typical latitude of minus 50 or plus 50 that doesn't make a difference is uh, 30 8.3 degrees, a lot larger than at the equator. And this large differences causes season. And you see here the formula for calculating this solstice angle. And at the typical ancient location of Pumapunku, and that means um, that the latitude of Pumapunku was different than it is today, it was 19.5 degrees. And this tilt angle is 23.6. When we put in this data in the formula, we get a solstice angle of 25.1 degrees. So that is not very different than today, but a little bit. And I must be honest about Pumapunku. Pumapunku remains still a bit of a mystery because it seems to be a temple 
that was pointed to the east of the rising sun, ancient rising sun. And there is the structure is built within a, a larger square. They're all equally oriented. But when I put these angles in this structure, I'm not sure if this makes really sense. But it seems to be matching, but I'm not totally convinced. So that's very interesting. And also we have questions still after researching ancient structures. And that is very interesting, of course, for us. The thing is about um, the movements of the southern hemisphere, so the south pole, the southern spin axis, is that we really don't know very much about this. It was pretty stable. It didn't move as much as the north pole on the northern hemisphere. That is because there are so very little ancient structures on the southern hemisphere that were originally pointed to the south pole. You would say, oh, there are a lot of structures in Corral, and they're also on the southern hemisphere in Peru. But these structures are all very clockwise oriented, and they were originally oriented to a north pole and not to the south pole. And this, this makes it very hard to accurately distill the positions of the poles on Antarctica. So these pictures of pole 1, pole 2 and pole 3 on the southern hemisphere are suggestions. They are not really based on a large amount of triangulations of ancient structures because they are simply not present. But from our mathematical method, we know quite sure that the southern spin axis was very stable. It hardly moved, but it moved a little bit. And these little movements caused little deviations in the orientations of the sites at Tiwanaku. So this was Pumapunku for now. If there are new discoveries about Pumapunku, we will publish them, of course. And uh, I will leave you by saying that we are very intrigued about Pumapunku and about Tiwanaku in general. We will be following also the research of our friend Brian Forster. I want to thank you for watching to this video and uh, if we have new updates and new discoveries about Pumapunku or Timunako in general, we will be posting them on our Patreon page or on YouTube or on our website. Thank you and I hope to see you the next time on my channel. Thank you.